हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज एट्थ ऑफ फेब्रवरी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल एट द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइज इन द टुडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर ऑल द आर्टिकल्स अलॉन्ग विद इट्स बैकग्राउंड एंड वे फॉरवर्ड वी आर गोइंग टू सी मोर ओवर आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू हेयर दैट इफ यू आर ज्वाइनिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब और यू कैन विजिट टेलीग्राम एंड कैन सर्च देयर द चैनल बाई टाइपिंग थिंकिंग पैलेट बाई साहिल नाउ लेट स्टार्ट विद द सेशन बट बिफोर दैट आई वुड लाइक टू शो यू ओवर व्यू ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट विच आर्टिकल्स आर एक्चुअली इंपॉर्टेंट इन द टूडेज न्यूज पेपर सो फर्स्ट आर्टिकल सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिक्लाइंस टू टेक अ प्लीज अगेंस्ट एलिवेटिंग लॉयर सो गाइज हेयर वी सी दिस थिंग दैट वन ऑफ अ लॉयर वॉज टू बी वॉज टू बी एलिवेटेड एज एन एडिशनल जज इन द मद्रास हाई कोर्ट बट देर आर एलिगेशन अगेंस्ट दिस जज इट हैज बिन सेट दैट ही हैड मेड सर्टेन हेट स्पीच इज इन द पास्ट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट थिंग ही शुड नॉट बी एलिवेटेड एज एन एडिशनल जज नाउ हेयर इट इज बींग सेट दैट दिस मैट डिसीजन हैज बिन टेकन बाय द कॉलेजियम सो राइट नाउ दे नॉट गो अगेंस्ट दैट हाउ एवर दिस कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी यू आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड टू गो टू मच इन डिटेल फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन फॉर एग्जामिनेशन दीज कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज आर नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट बट एकेडमिक इशूज आर इंपॉर्टेंट फाइन सो नो नीड टू फोकस टू मच हेयर गाइज वी सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट रिसेंटली एन अर्थ क्वेक एन टर के एंड सीरिया के बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो मेनी फर्टिलिटीज हैव हैपेंड इट वॉज इन डीड अ मिस फॉर्चुनेट इवेंट सिक्स थाउजेंड पीपल्स हैव डाइड सो फार हेयर देन आफ्टर दैट राहुल गांधी आस्क प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू एक्सप्लेन टाइज विद अदानी पॉलिटिकल आर्टिकल नो नीड टू गो टू मच हेयर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन सम हल्दवानी एनक्रोचर्स विल हैव टू गो सो बेसिकली रिसेंटली गाइज वी हैव सीन दिस थिंग दैट द ऑर्डर वॉज पास्ट फाइन Uh, that uh, uh, earlier by the uttarakhand high court that the people who have encroached the land or uh, railway land needs to be evicted so that thing is going on after that moving on guys uh, in this particular direction city section aap bjp hit the streets political articles no need to go too much in detail here okay so moving on guys in this particular capacity then the crime related news etc have been given fine no need to go then delhi high court virginity test on accused is a sexist and unconstitutional will take this article then further moving on after that guys now uh, again these tenders etc has been given so we'll reach directly to editorial page a poly crisis that is depleting pakistan's resilience we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination then side article open season past uh, poll ties more crucial in meghalaya than any pre poll understanding so guys uh, the political article no, nothing much important in this article fiscal consolidation in the context of budget we'll see the article fine then a quick reset now this particular article is talking about the recent diplomatic uh, initiatives taken between india and canada we'll take this article then further going on below opinion neglecting the health sector has consequences we'll see this article then uh, arising raje and divided bjp not important article it's a political article then further moving on the 30 crore missing voters are mostly young urban or migrants so guys guys we'll see this particular article about these missing voters who are these missing voters and all these issues here will take then moving again the saga of a spy balloon in us air space now this particular article guys is uh, talking about this particular article is talking about the recent incident where a chinese balloon which was said as a spy balloon entered in us's air space and it has been shot down so we'll briefly see what are these spy balloons etc then what has the union budget allocated to minorities then here uh, basically we see the car t cell or cart cell therapy for the cancer we'll see this particular article with respect to the health and related issues then further moving on guys okay a uh, personal aid from india reached turkey more relief and route so guys india has always been a front runner in providing humanitarian assistance to the crisis which are caught in some kind of a crisis or disaster situation so here we are also helping the turkey in these times of crisis so this is a good example of india's responsible diplomacy then uh, here see this thing uh, turkey syria thanks india india russia continue discussion to evolve a payment mechanism so basically guys uh, see this particular thing ke that what has happened you know already this thing russia ukraine war is going on and as russia ukraine war is going on a lot of sanctions have been imposed by the west particularly the usa on russia 
now during this particular time actually we have found an opportunity that we can get subs we can get a discounted fuel from russia okay and we are importing a lot of crude oil from russia but the point is that russia has been banned from international payment settlement system such as the swift moreover a lot of sanctions other sanctions have also been imposed on to the russia so point is that what is happening india is looking the ways that how in rupee okay rupee okay or how uh, alternative payment mechanisms can be identified so we are searching for such things then uh, after that guys uh, moving on uh, here four tv journalists arrested for creating ruckus nothing important panel on sc status to dalit converts will get all facilities okay then further moving on guys in this particular direction political articles etc has been given no not, not important to go much in these articles lwo related violence came down by 76% we'll see this particular article with respect to the internal security then these tenders etc have been given oil still needed while world transitions to clean energy system so guys here we see this particular thing that the world is moving towards decarbonization world is moving towards renewable energy sustainable energy but here we find this particular thing that uh, basically uh, sultan al jabbar the president designate of next un summit on climate change he says that yes we need the alternative energies renewable energies but still even in the transition phase we need to have we need to have the oil we need to use the hydrocarbons okay now much important substance is not given in this article different voices on factoring and allegation against victoria gori okay then further moving on uh, here guys so we come to the world page again that the chinese balloon that has got shot down is being talked about sunak reshuffles cabinet nothing important for the examination Sitaraman signals readiness to review 28% GST on cement. Now you are not required to track that uh, which item had come under which tax lab in GST. Okay, so not nothing much important. Exposure to Adani bond hit bank ratings. Then Bharti Airtel's uh, prof uh, Bharti Air Airtel's uh, revenues etc are being talked about. So guys, this is about the overview of the entire newspaper. After this, we have the sports page. Now, uh, I hope you have understood that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper. And now let's start the discussion one by one in detail. Okay, starting up. So in every class, we start with a GS quotation. Okay, and this quotation can be used to complement our answers in GS paper number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So today we'll take the quotation from Jimi Hendrix. So Jimi Hendrix says that when the power of love, when the power of love overcomes the love of power the world will know peace so the power of love when the power of love overcomes the love of power so guys the love of power drives a person towards the, the love of power drives a person towards the consolidation of such power and when the power is consolidated a person often tries to dominate okay rather than power of rather than the power of love should dominate uh, because if the power of love will dominate there will be the compassion there will be the generosity there will be the, an idea of justice towards the poor and the vulnerable people so this is a difference okay so the power of love should be more important because then the world can know the peace now this particular idea can be used in gs paper number 4 this idea can be used in gs paper number 4 ethics as well as essay essay now Moving and taking up the first article, okay, taking up the first article. So the first article we have taken from the text and the context section and this is a new section that is the health pearls that got started in text and context where they pick certain um, health related issues, science and technology related issues. So the article reads, CAR T cell therapy, the next step towards a holistic treatment of cancer. Now this particular article we'll see with respect to GS paper number 3 science and technology GS paper number 3 science and technology okay as well as in prelims examination such kind of questions ha could be asked in science and technology so for that purpose also we'll take this particular article now let's start with the article so basically the article is talking about a new treatment regimen for cancer so cancer which happens to be a very serious and a dangerous disease so how effective treatment remedies in the form of the car t cell therapy has been evolved so we'll take that thing now first of all before going in this particular article guys what is actually the cancer what do we mean by cancer so basically as we talk about cancer just a minute 
Fine. So when we talk about cancer, what is cancer? Cancer is a group of diseases. Okay, it is a group of diseases. There are the different different types of cancer. Now it is characterized by just a minute. Yes. So as we talk about cancer, cancer is a group of uh, diseases which is characterized by the uncontrolled growth and uncontrolled spread of abnormal cells. So guys, a particular type of cells, let's take example of the white blood cells. So what will happen? Therein, there will be an ab abnormal growth of the white blood cells and that abnormal growth is called as cancer. Okay, so this is something. Now when we talk about cancer, there are three major forms of treatment for cancer in the present times. Number one, number one is uh, uh, surgery. So what can happen? Basically the cancerous cells or the organ where the cancer has developed the part of that particular organ can be removed locally by the surgery. Now surgery is most effective when in earlier stages the cancer is detected. So there is a surgery which is removing the cancer or the part where the cancer has infested. Second is radiotherapy. So in radiotherapy, ionizing radiations, radiations are used to neutralize the cancerous cells. And the third way, third way is a systemic therapy. Now systemic therapy is a way in which there will be the oral medications or such other kind of medica medications will be given to treat the cancers. Now when we talk about the systemic therapies where medications are used, chemotherapy, chemotherapy is one of the most uh, widely known type of therapy that is used in cancer. Now basically guys what is done in chemotherapy? So in chemotherapy there will be the medications that will be given, medications that will be given to stop the growth of these cancerous cells, to stop the growth of these cancerous cells. Now when we talk about the chemotherapy, it has a lot of side effects also because guys it is arresting the growth of cells, okay, but in the process it often targets the healthy cells and it even kills healthy cells. So because of that particular thing, chemotherapy is not that much effective. Moreover, chemotherapy also had many side effects, okay, because of these side effects, the quality of life of people also gets impacted. So this is the chemotherapy. However, there is an advanced version of the systemic therapy that is immunotherapy. So immunotherapy is an advanced version of chemotherapy. Now what happens in immunotherapy? So basically guys, here the drugs are specifically, the, 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 the drugs specifically bind the targets on the cancer or the immune cells, okay. So basically they bind the immune cells, immune cells, okay, and they help the stop or the growth of the tumor or the cancer, okay. But that also has some of its limitations. So after chemotherapy, immunotherapy, the prevalent therapy that this article talks about is CAR T cells therapy, CAR T cells therapy. So now we are going to discuss that what is this CAR T cells therapy. Now, first of all, CAR T, it stands for CAR T, it stands for chimeric antigen receptor, chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy. Now, what it means? Basically, guys, in chemotherapy or when we talk about immunotherapy, injectable drugs, oral drugs are being given to the given to a person and by that particular drug or by that particular injection fine uh, basically the treatment is carried in the inside the body but in this car t therapy what is done what is done a patient's own cells will be retrieved a patient's own cells will be retrieved and they will be modified in the lab now within our cells there are t cells t cells now t cells are the component of immune system now, so basically what will be done, basically these T cells will be activated in the lab and then these cells will again be inserted or will again be put back in human's body. Now, as these T cells have been activated, which are immune cells, so what will happen? What will happen? These cells are conditioned to multiply more effectively. So, therefore, your body's own immune system gets nudged up, your body's own immune system gets activated and that helps in 
fighting with the cancer that helps in fighting with the cancer so basically when we talk about the car t cells they are called as the living drugs why living drugs because nothing artificial is being injected in your body your own cells remodified or modified or nudged of cells are being inserted so basically this kind of treatment method has been believed to be most effective side effects are not there because some heavy dosage of medications are not being given your own body's immune system is fighting essentially with the disease now when we talk about the car t cell therapy where your body's own cells will be retrieved t cells will be activated and it will be reinserted back this car t cell therapy it has been approved it has been approved for many types of cancers for example it has been approved for leukemia which is a cancer arising from the cells that produce white blood cells so there is a leukemia and there are many other types of cancers where this scar t cell therapy has been approved now point that comes here is that in india the uptake of the car t cell therapy has not been quite encouraging it has not been quite effective the first issue that comes here is that guys that first of all you see this particular thing the clinical trials which shows that the car t cell therapy is effective it was published just 10 years back around 2011 12 but the first car t car t therapy has been performed in india in 2022 so uptake of new technologies uptake of new medical interventions has been very much slow moreover the cost is a very big barrier in this particular direction cost has been a very big barrier in this particular direction so the point is that we need to uptake these new medical interventions early so that people can take the benefit of it so that is all about this particular article and now moving to next article okay so here guys uh, first of all let's read the article article reads delhi high court virginity test on accused is sexist and unconstitutional it is sexist and unconstitutional now first of all guys in the past few months we have repeatedly seen multiple news talking about this virginity test or talking about many number of times there is also you might have heard the word two finger test let's discuss about that what is this virginity test basically uh, when we talk about the virginity test cabinet yes so when we talk about virginity test virginity test is a kind of a examination that is performed usually on the girls to determine that whether they are sexually active or not now in this virginity test there is a focus to locate the hymen to locate to locate the hymen in a women's vagina so there is an understanding that this hymen in the vagina could be torn just because of sexual intercourse but guys that is a completely a wrong understanding because the hymen in the women's vagina could be torn because of some uh, physical sports activity or such kind of other things or due to some other factors also but we the but the often it is understood that the hymen could be ruptured only by the sexual intercourse so in the virginity test this hymen would be relocated many number of times this virginity test is 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 this examination is done by inserting the finger two fingers in the vagina of a women that is the virginity test often we also called it it as the two finger test two finger test now guys this two finger test it has often been used in to determine rape now the point that comes here is that what is the need of this two finger test basically the point is that if the rape now what do we mean by rape first of all then i will come on this article first of all let's understand that what do we mean by rape okay so basically guys section 375 and section 376 of ipc deal with the rape and rape is defined as a sexual intercourse at the sexual intercourse which has been carried with the women without the consent with the women without the consent so consent is the most important thing that will define that whether it was a rape or not a rape now point is that when the two finger test two finger test is being carried on a women the point is that there is an idea that if women was earlier sexually active if women earlier was sexually active then she might have given the consent okay 
but that is immaterial that is immaterial moreover if i come in this particular article if i come in this particular article guys basically what happened there was a murder case there was a murder case and in murder case one of the women who was uh, who, whose name was include who, who who was accused later she got convicted also so one of the women who was accused in the murder case so to verify that whether she is speaking truth or not the virginity test was carried to now point is that how virginity test is relating to the point that whether a person is speaking truth or not it is based on some kind of a sexist or it is based on kind of an entirely flawed idea so delhi high court specifically provided that these virginity test or these two finger test on the people who are accused of any kind of a crime it is unconstitutional it cannot be carried and guys when we talk about such kind of a test they actually violate bodily autonomy they violate bodily autonomy now in this particular direction guys what has happened few days back even supreme court few days back this news was also there into the supreme court supreme court specifically provided that in no condition these virginity test or two finger test should be carried on the women particularly in, even in the in the rape cases now in 2013 already in 2013 already supreme court has banned this two finger test but actually the problem is that it is still carried it is still carried many number of times doctors they don't have an information that they cannot do that thing so this is the issue that's coming in this particular direction okay so guys that is about it i hope you have understood it there's nothing in this particular article even in this article it has just been there are two sentences one is that it violates uh, the article 20 and second it should not be carried it is constitutional unconstitutional now moving on to the next article article the saga of a spy balloon in us airspace the saga of a spy balloon in us airspace now guys we'll see this particular article with respect to the international issues international awareness moreover guys here we are actually going uh, we are going to see that what do we understand by uh, spy balloons so for prelims examination for prelims examination we'll try to understand that what are these spy balloons and all other basic details with respect to them will be briefly we understanding now moving on guys in this particular direction so basically first of all let me tell you that what has happened let me tell you that what has happened so oh, okay uh, okay one more thing is that guys you don't need to do too much of a phd kind of a thing on this article that okay on which date this balloon was released when this balloon reached to us and all such kind of a thing no just only very to the point things are needed to be seen now see his say here you can see china here we can see china and here we can see us there we can see us so basically it is being provided that one of a balloon from china it got deviated and it actually reached to us it got reached to us okay fine so in montana over the montana in us this balloon reached and this particular balloon it was suspected by the usa that this particular balloon is for the spy purpose and it has deliberately been released now there are two versions china say that this balloon got drifted got drifted to the usa we did not had any intention to release it in usa but usa says that no deliberately this balloon has been sent by the china secondly china says that it is a civilian balloon for weather purposes we have released it but usa says that it was a spy balloon it carried certain equip equipments which were used to the spy now what happened the basically the usa they shot down this particular balloon they shot down this particular balloon and as they shot down it china is criticizing usa china says it is clearly an over reaction whatever you have done we could have solved this matter diplomatically but you decided to shot down the balloon okay so this is the confrontation that is going on now the point that comes here the point that comes here guys is that you are not required to go too much in detail but some of the basic informations about these spy balloons okay so guys when we talk about these spy balloons spy balloons they are called as uh, they they have been defined as high altitude just a minute so as we talk about the spy balloons okay spy balloons have been referred as high altitude fine yes 
तो स्पाई बलून्स दे आर रेफर्ड टू एज हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड सर्वलांस टूल्स ओके एंड दे ऑपरेट एट एट्टी थाउजेंड टू वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फीट ऑफ हाइट इट मीन्स दे ऑपरेट मच हाइयर देन द कमर्शियल एयरलाइंस दैट फ्लाई दे ऑपरेट मच हाइयर देन द लेवल एट विच कमर्शियल एयरलाइंस ऑपरेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल गाइज हेयर वी सी दिस थिंग दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट माउंट एवरेस्ट सो माउंट एवरेस्ट इज अराउंड एट थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट मीटर्स सो हेयर देर इज माउंट एवरेस्ट we see this particular thing that the commercial aircrafts they operate at 12000 meter okay but when we talk about these uh, aircrafts they operate at the 25900 meter or you can say that in the range of 80000 to 120000 feet so either meter or feet whatever you feel comfortable so in terms of feet 80000 to 120000 feet it means well above the place where aircrafts of fly above that it actually operates okay it actually hovers now when we talk about when we talk about these spy these spy balloons now these spy balloons they are equipped with high resolution cameras they are equipped with imaging devices okay which are actually suspended below the balloon for example for example let me show you that here we can see this is a balloon this is a balloon and below the balloon these equipment that is the camera imaging device any sensors they are just they hang they are suspended beyond below this now point is that as these balloons are at the height of 80000 to 1 lakh 20 uh, 1000 feet okay they get a very big horizon they get a birds eye view over large areas so that they can scan these large areas they can they can carry effective surveillance on these large areas is it clear or not now the point that we are talking about that guys here is that basically these uh, uh, balloons first of all they are economically very much viable they are economically very much viable okay they are viable when compared with the satellites okay they are viable compared with the other kind of drones or such kind of a things okay now the disadvantage of these particular balloons is that they they are not powered and because they are not powered they depend on to the air flow patterns and easily they can get drifted okay and so therefore they cannot be steered they cannot directly be steered okay so this is something that has been a very big limitation now over the past time it has been accused repeatedly it has been accused repeatedly okay they it has been accused repeatedly that basically china has used these balloons to spy for example taiwan taiwan has accused the people's liberation army that they are using this spy balloon in the past moreover over the andaman and nicobar island such kind of spy balloons were spotted in january 2022 so point is that china actually had such track record where they have sent such spy balloons so now in this particular case is was it really a spy balloon or was it a civilian balloon so this confrontations is going on usa had shot down that balloon okay now if you see here in the newspaper okay if you see here in the newspaper we see this particular thing okay, that us uh, a minute less us had shot down and now us is retrieving the remnants of that particular balloon so now it's further needed to be seen that what act actually that particular balloon was all about okay so that is all guys about this particular article beyond that you are not required to go and you are not required to see too much in this particular article okay now moving on guys and uh, before moving in it let me take some of the doubts that are there sir how to make current affair notes of newspaper because it becomes very much difficult when it comes to revision dekho guys understand this thing you have to do little bit of hard work you can't just think that everything will be readily be given or will readily be available see this thing uh, i actually am trying to relieve 90 90% of your work is being done why how because you are getting synoptic notes every day in that synoptic notes the most important articles or the articles that are relevant for upsc exam are being given in a very simplified manner along with the background however that particular from that particular synoptic notes what you can do you can retrieve some important points and you can make your own notes now understand this thing i have to give the notes little bit more in detailed manner because every person's understanding will be different see i can assume that you might be knowing that thing but it is actually not fair 
fine so i have to make them detailed so that everybody can understand but the point is that some information which you know already you don't need to note it down but some information which is new for you you can also make a small summary notes you need to maintain some notebooks or on digital applications such as onenote etc you can do that thing so that is a persistent exercise that you have to do that fine Okay, sir, is earthquake in Turkey not important for UPSC? Understand this thing, that earthquake that has come in Turkey, Syria. Just guys, revise the concept, basic concepts of earthquake. Okay, that what are the reasons behind the earthquake. But you are not actively required to see that why, uh, uh, how many people got died and all that kind of a thing. So for disaster management, GS paper number three, even for GS paper number one, geography, you need to revise your concepts of earthquake. Okay, that is something very much important. One more thing I want to tell you. Basically, just see the which specific plates are responsible for the earthquake that has come here. Fine. That is the important thing. Now, moving on in this particular direction. Okay, now, the next article, a quick reset, a quick reset. Now this particular article is talking about India-Canada relations and we'll see this particular article with respect to GS paper number 2, GS paper number 2, IR international relations and in the international relation, India-Canada relations. Now if you are following regularly, yesterday also we have seen one article in this particular line, okay, because we have seen this thing that Canada's foreign minister visited India and actually Canada's foreign minister will visit at least three times India in 2023. One time now Canada's foreign minister has visited, then she will be coming for the G20 meets in around the March and then she'll be coming with the Canadian prime minister later words. Okay. Now, understand this particular thing guys, that as we talk about India-Canada relations, India-Canada ties have been uh, basically, they, these ties go even before the Indian independence, independence as many of the revolutionaries, many of the freedom fighters of India, they often used to go to Canada and many of their nationalist activities were based out of in the Canada. Now, when we talk about Canada-India relations post-independence, so basically Canada has been first of all the one of the most earliest nation that was associated with India's nuclear program. India's nuclear program. But when India tested the first nuclear bomb in 1974, Smiling Buddha 1, so after that India-Canada relations actually got impacted, it went down and then in 1980s India-Canada relations were not good. Why? Because guys we see this thing that in around 1980s Khalistani movement was becoming a major threat, was becoming a major issue and the Chinese people had given uh, basically Chinese people, sorry Canadians, Canadians, we see this particular thing that the Canadians have given shelter to separatist Khalistani groups, separatist Khalistani groups who were even behind the 1985 bombings of an Air India flight. So because of this particular thing, cooperation between India and Canada declined in 1980s. However, India-Canada relations were restored in 2010 by the, with the visit of the Prime Minister of India to Canada and even the civil nuclear cooperation has been signed between India and Canada in the past few years. So relations actually are now improving and now in 2022 the relations between India and Canada has reached to all time high. Why they have reached to all time high? Because first of all guys understand this thing right now the world countries are generating a new interest in the Indo-Pacific region. Okay, for example, France have declared Indo-Pacific policy, quadrilateral security dialogue, USA is cooperating with India in the Indo-Pacific and now Canada also have declared their strategic document or their uh, policy towards Indo-Pacific region. So in November 2022, few months back, Canada announced their new Indo-Pacific strategy and in this Indo-Pacific strategy, they have talked on two things. Number one, they have said that the China is a coercive power. They say that the China is a disruptive global power, it is a coercive power, it is a disruptive power, it is a coercive power, it uses its power fine for ulterior motives and at the same time it has appreciated India. It says that India is a critical partner of 
Canada. It says that with India, Canada shares the traditions of democracy. India and Canada, they have, they both are liberal democracies. They respect pluralism. They are, they believe in the rights of the people. All these kind of a things. And India can be a meaningful partner to support the Canada. So this is something by which India-Canada relations have got improved. One more thing is that, guys. Canada-India relations are also improving because Canada is in the search of an economic partner. Now you see this particular thing that when we talk about pandemic, pandemic made one realization to every country, developed country particularly, that they have become too much dependent on China. Their semiconductors are coming from China. Semiconductors are the backbone of modern electronics industry. So semiconductors are coming from China. Rare earth metals are coming from China. Active pharmaceutical ingredients for medicines, they are coming from China. Everything is coming from China. So their dependence is a lot on China. And China can go for trade weaponization, can go for trade weaponization, can use this dependence as a weapon. So therefore, decoupling movement is going on in the entire world. Developed countries want to move away from China. So therefore, what is the next logical step for them? It is India. So basically, Canada's search for new markets Canada is searching for new markets to, diversi to diversify its considerable economic engagement. And here, India is an economic partner. So basically, guys, now what has happened, Indo-Pacific policy has been released and now Canada is looking to sign early progress trade agreement. Early progress trade agreement. This will be an agreement to enhance the free trade agreement, with free trade between India and Canada. Moreover, Later words, we also expect that the comprehensive, comprehensive economic partnership agreement will also be signed. Comprehensive economic partnership agreement will also be signed. So this is something, this is something that has happened, okay, between the India and Canada. Now, further moving on in this particular thing, though India and Canada relations are improving, but still there are certain irritants. There are certain irritants that are there. And what are these irritants? The first irritant that we have is the resurgence of Khalistani separatism. Now we see this particular thing guys, that many of the Khalistani separatist people, they have raised anti-India campaigns in the Canada and we also have seen this thing that the demands for referendum has been made by some people in the Canada as well as there are the incidents of vandalism, violence against the Indian people living in Canada. So the point is that India always have this particular kind of an apprehension with Canada that why you are not taking strong action against these Khalistani supporters. Moreover, there is one more issue guys that have been there. Many number of times Canada has made certain comments on developments going on in India. For example, for example, the rights, fine human rights, and their status in India. Moreover, when farm movement were going on, Prime Minister of Canada has outrightly, what happened, they said that, uh, they uh, outrightly they uh, supported farmers and criticized the government. Because of that particular thing also, a kind of a diplomatic tussle developed between India and Canada. Now, basically, uh, I am not commenting that whether it was right or it was not right, but the point that I am talking about here is that Indian government had said that these are the internal matters of India. These are the internal matters of India. India will resolve it at at, at their own understanding. The other countries should not interfere in internal matters. Okay. So this is something that has come here. Now guys, moving to the next article. Okay, so now we are taking the editorial section and the first article that we'll take is neglecting the health sector has consequences. Neglecting the health sector has consequences. Okay, now uh, this particular article, we'll see guys with respect to the, this particular article guys, we'll see with respect to the present budget that has been released and in that particular budget, what are the prospects for development? Okay, now moving on. Okay. Now, uh, basically, it has been provided that whenever we talk about the idea of a welfare state, the welfare state is that state which bothers about the people's well-being, which cares about the people's uh, well-being, people's health, fine, which cares about the people's developmental needs and all such kind of a thing. So when we talk about when we talk about the welfare state, welfare state needs to focus on five giant evils, according to according to the economist William Beveridge. William Beveridge says that five evils, five problems are needed to be focused. Number one, want. People's want. 
people's disease people's ignorance squalor squalor means something which is unpleasant unpleasantries and idleness these five challenges are to be dealt by a state if a state wants to position itself as a welfareist or a developmental state now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about india india's investment needs to be prioritized first of all in certain key areas for example nutrition health employment education environment sanitation hygiene these are the first order priorities that needs to be focused we also need shiny airports we also need highways speed speed trains bullet trains but these are the second order priorities first order priorities are the nutrition health employment this is something that we need to focus first now guys when we talk about guys this particular year's budget this particular year's budget there are some important developments that have come in this year's budget for which government needs to be appreciated for example free food grains to 80 crore people okay development of 500 backward blocks fine then broadening the access to housing even guys avas yojana more funding has been given for that clean water toilet employment through rural employment guarantee program opportunities for skill development very good so these are all the good things that have come in the budget but we have not focused on how to deal with the problem of increasing inequality so widening inequality how to deal with that particular kind of an issue then next issue guys that comes here in this particular direction Basically, we need to focus on these basic things, but at the same time, we also need to expand the universal access to high quality education, health care, nutrition. Now, why we need to see when we talk about nutrition, just don't provide the basic food grains, but also provide the good quality food. All the micronutrients, macronutrients should also be balanced, provide supplementary protein, all such kind of a things. Now see this thing, that if you focus today in education, if you focus today in healthcare, skill development, nutrition, which will further help in health and well-being of the people tomorrow you will be able to reap advantage dividend out of that particular thing because more educated, more healthy workforce is going to be productive workforce for tomorrow. Okay. Now, now, issue that comes here is that basically it has been provided that no country, no country can afford that their population stays illiterate, their population is unhealthy, their population is malnourished. No state can afford that. But in India, we need to focus on these things. It has been provided that 230 million Indians slid in poverty during the COVID-19. Focus on these people. According to the annual status of education report, ASAR report, it is being provided that there is abysmal state of education. Students in class 5 are not able to read the class 2 text. Students in class 5 are not able to read the class 2 text. National Family Health Survey 5 data also shows this particular thing. That a large number of children, fine, for example, 35.5% children are stunted. Stunted means their height to, uh, their, their age to height ratio. For a particular age, there needs to be a particular height, but they don't have that height. So, 35.5% students are stunted, 32.1% students are underweight. So, point is that we are not able to feed, we are not able to focus on poverty reduction, we are also not focusing on the health, uh, proper educational outcomes. So, basically, now moreover, on education, it has also been provided recently. Government recently the data shows this thing that large number of students have been shifted from private school to government schools. This can be because of multiple number of factors and one factor is obviously that the parents are now not able to afford the education in private schools. This is something. Disease burden is also rising. Disease burden is also rising. Non-communicable diseases are increasing. Mental health issues are there. Moreover, India also lacks. India also lacks human resource infrastructure. All these particular kind of a things. Fine. Now, what is need of our? Need of our is that we need to urgently, we need to urgently address all these issues, particularly the issue of health, issue of education, issue of skill development, issue of poverty. These issues are needed to be addressed immediately. Okay, and it is a responsibility of a government to protect the citizens, to firewall the citizens against all such kind of an eventuality. Okay, there is a need of political leadership. There need, is need of an adequate health, uh, sorry, adequate funding in order to solve these all particular kind of an issue. Okay, so guys, that is all about this particular article.
fine and by focusing on this equity justice equity justice will eventually come okay now moving to next article a poly crisis that is depleting pakistan's resilience a poly crisis that is depleting pakistan's resilience okay now what this particular article actually talks about guys this actually article talks about the states of pakistan's economy now we have provided all the key takeaways of this particular article but the point is that you are not actually required to go too much in detail in this article okay but anyhow let's see the article what it is talking about and the article will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 india and neighborhoods india and neighborhood neighbors okay now uh, basically guys right now we see this particular thing that the pakistan economy has been impacted now first of all when we talk about since 1947 when the pakistan was carved as a separate state pakistan has seen economic crisis at multiple occasions at multiple occasion it has even approached imf now also pakistan's economy is getting impacted particularly after the flooding of 2022 and now its economy is on the collapse here we see this particular thing guys that now pakistan is dependent on the donors international financial institutions and is also asking charity from the friendly countries where the where the china is specifically the country which is expected to help the pakistan now if we see pakistan is in the brink of default okay like sri lanka pakistan is facing a similar kind of a future here you see this thing ki inflation is at 28% in pakistan which is so high then pakistani rupee has lost 17% of its value in just last 7 days in just last 7 days right now one pakistani rupee is equal to uh, one pakis uh, uh, one dollar one us dollar is equal to 300 pakistani rupees okay then there are lot of import restrictions that have been imposed in pakistan why because simply they don't have foreign currency to pay for the critical imports so imports have been suspended so basically now pakistan is facing economic crisis and there is a kind of a default economic default situation in which pakistan is moving now as this particular issues are coming why what is the reason reason is misgovernance inaptitude lack of skill now the point that comes here is that basically if pakistan will not ensure immediately that how they can bring their economy back on the track terrorist outfits will take that particular advantage of this particular situation terrorism can very conveniently and can easily return back to pakistan now we have seen in the past few years there was a relative peace that was there but recently we have seen this particular thing that there was a suicide bomber attack that was carried where 100 worshipers were killed in a mosque on peshawar in pakistan so these incidents these incidents can come back and they can impose a large problems okay so pakistan now has become a kind of a dysfunctional state where it is not able to address the fundamental day to day issues so pakistan need to ensure that how it's going to deal with all these particular challenges immediately it is urgent priority that pakistan should focus so article was not was quite a generic article but these are the important key takeaways from here now moving to next article okay fiscal consolidation in the context of budget now basically guys these this article uh, is written by mr c rangrajan who was the former who was the former chairman and prime uh, chairman of prime minister's economic advisory council was also the former governor of reserve bank of india and dk shrivastava who is a chief policy advisor okay ey india now actually in this particular article guys a lot of datas fine now if you if i zoom it for you the article is talking about lot of data such as budgetary estimates revised estimates for this year that year the gdp nominal gdp real gdp expenditure levels fine now the point is that all this particular data that is being given here now much of the data happens to be provisional here and actually the point is that when we talk about the examination in examinations that much deep data points are not asked moreover it's not even possible for you to remember them and thirdly 
they are not that much related. You need to know the broad trends. Okay, for example, the direction of Indian economy, direction of India's export sector. Broadly, you need to have numbers that what is the level at which labor fares, uh, what is the level at which women labor force participation rate is right now. Fine, all these, the contribution of service sector in economy. Okay, the fiscal deficit where it is hovering. So point is that line by line, you are not required to read this particular article. Fine, line by line, you are not required to read this particular article. Just only broad takeaways we need to take from this article. So basically, now guys, the article is talking about this thing that when we talk about any particular economy, any particular economy, the growth of economy is affected by the size of government expenditure. Now see this thing. If government will do more expenditure by that particular thing, uh, what will happen, uh, for example, government is doing expenditure and by that expenditure, government is constructing a highway. What will happen? Obviously, people will be hired to work on that highway project. It will generate employment. When these people will be given wages, these people will demand goods by that wages and when they will demand goods what will happen industries need to provide the good they will hire the people so point is that there is a virtuous cycle there is a cycle that will start and by that particular thing eventually the growth will come in economy so always more the government expenditure more the investment it does in economy it 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 determines growth now this has always happened now when we talk about guys this year total expenditure that government is going to do total expenditure that government is going to do it actually has come down compared to the last year for example last year government's expenditure was uh, we see this particular total expenditure relative to gdp was 15.3 percent in 22-23 and now it has come to 14.9 percent 14.9 percent this year so there is a slight dip there is a marginal dip that has been there Okay, now further moving on, if we see guys this particular year, government is doing a certain expenditure and majority of expenditure that government do will be capital expenditure, capital expenditure. So capital expenditure is at 37%. Now what is capital expenditure? Basically guys, government's expenditures could be of two types, revenue and capital expenditure. Capital expenditure is that expenditure which either will increase your asset, for example, expenditure for highway development, it will increase asset x, expenditure for development of port or infrastructure. Capital and revenue expenditure is the expenditure that is for day-to-day -day operational purposes. For example, the expenditure for subsidies, ex agriculture, done for giving the salaries, etc. So government's capital expenditure is the most focus area. 37% increase is there in the capital expenditure and approximately 10 lakh crore rupees government intends to invest through capital expenditure. Now, state capital expenditure will also increase. State capital expenditure will also increase. Why? Because guys, central grants. Now, when we talk about the central government, central government provides a different, different type of grant to state government. Some of the grants the state will use to develop some capital assets. So, the states will also be developing using certain grants to develop the capital assets, infrastructure, etc. Now, one issue that is there in this particular budget is that center has not indicated the time when it will reach the fiscal deficit of 3% of GDP. Okay, so fiscal deficit guys, it is the additional money that we are spending over the receipts that we are getting. Okay, so fiscal deficit, let's say you raised 100 rupees but you spend 200 rupees. So this 100 rupees extra that you spent, it is your fiscal deficit. So our fiscal deficit, when we have taken a target in FRBM, Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act, that we need to reduce our fiscal deficit. We need to reduce it to 3% or in the range of 2.5%. But when we will achieve this fiscal deficit of 3%, no timeline has been given here. Government had said that by 25-26, 25-26, fiscal deficit will go to 4.5%. But when it will go to 3%, we don't have clear land uh, roadmap here. Now, debt to GDP, debt to GDP ratio right now is 42%, 42%, okay, uh, however, uh, sorry, debt to GDP percent is to be reached by 40%, but it will not be reached. Okay, we have a huge debt compared to our GDP. We have a huge debt compared to our GDP. Now, it has been provided that in the near as well as medium term, in the near as well as medium term, if we want, if we need to bring the growth, we need to focus and see only government, 
in the start we have seen for growth expenditure in the economy plays a very important role now expenditure can be done by public government or by the private sector now the point that comes here is that only private sector expenditure uh, public sector expenditure will not be sufficient enough private sector also have to invest now here we see this particular thing that private investments relative to gdp needs to be ensured it actually requires enough investable resources that are left for private sector now guys understand this thing for example coal mining is there infrastructure development is there okay now point is that everywhere government is doing the work government is building road also government is going in oil exploration government is going in coal exploration so point is that government should leave the areas open government should leave the spaces open where private sector can invest so investable resources should also be left by the government currently only 1.1 percent of available uh, uh, here we see this particular thing that preemptively government is investing in all the investable resources only 1.1 percent is available for the private sector so we need to give more opportunities to the private sector also so that they can enhance their investment okay so that is all guys about this particular article fine i hope that you have understood this issue and now moving to next article the 30 crore missing voters are mostly young urban or migrants mostly young urban or migrants now basically guys what this particular article is talking about now here uh, we have seen this particular thing that over the years india has witnessed an increase in the number of voters increased in the number of voters and if i give you the latest data basically we see this thing okay, that from 1962 okay to the present times there is a fourfold increase a 4x increase in the number of voters today we have around 94.5 crore voters this year this is huge but the point is that almost one third almost one third of the voters find approximately 30 crores of the voters they stay away from exercising their vote in the last Lok Sabha 30 crore of the voters did not voted now for this particular thing election commission of india is walking extra mile it is sensitizing people it is creating awareness campaigns it is making the exercise of making voter id cards very easy fine it is running many of such campaigns to bring voters to vote but many voters are still not coming now here it has been provided that when we talk about the voter turnout talks of we actually right now india's voter turnout stands at around 67 percent we want to increase it to at least 75 percent now election commission of india has recognized that majority of the voters who are not voting they are young voters fine such as the people upsc spirits preparing for upsc not able to go back to their home to vote so young voters migrants they formed a big part of the 30 crore missing voters in india now here it has also been provided by the ECI that uh, urban apathy is also a very big issue. Urban apathy, urban apathy. People are not bothered in bothered to vote. They have an indifference towards the vote. Now election commission of India is taking multi-step approach. Is taking multi-step approach to ensure that voters come out and actually they vote. Okay. Now guys, here if we see, here if we see. Now here if we see, basically guys, uh, around 67% of voters, chart shows the number of electors and the voter turnout. So voter turnout was around 67% in India and we have seen that it has increased over the years. So over the years it has actually increased, good thing. Secondly guys, this chart shows the number of electors registered for the recent parliamentary election. So India, here guys you see India is number one. We have around 91 crore plus elected voters. Now, when we talk about three parliamentary seats from select state which recorded the lowest voter turnout so lowest voter turnout guys you can see west bengal uttar pradesh telangana tamil nadu so these are the states fine the chart shows voter turnout for percentage for countries in their latest elections now guys india's rank is 74th india's rank is 74th india is at the 74th position in terms of the voter turnout okay which is not very good which is not very good as we are the mother of democracies this is not very much good now point is that guys how this particular change can really come this change can come by realizing they are the people the voters should realize their own responsibility that they need to be an active participant in the voting process 
Now, as we talk about Election Commission of India coming out with the multiple initiatives, so recently, if you remember, we have discussed it also at multiple times in our newspaper analysis that Election Commission of India has also come out with the Multi-Constituency Remote Electronic Voting Machine System, REVM. Fine. REVM, Remote EVM. Now, in this remote EVM, what can happen? Fine. From the remote locations, the migrant people can vote. So, let's say the migrant people who have come to Delhi, fine. From Delhi, they can vote in their constituencies in, let's say, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. So, to enhance, but what has happened? Opposition has opposed this particular step and even government had said that we are not going to use it in the upcoming elections. Then apart from that, many other uh, campaigns to educate voters, etc. have also been taken up. So, these are all the initiatives that are taken. Now, moving up to the next article. Left wing extremist related violence come down by 76% in 2022 from cases in 2010, says Shah. Now guys, we can use this particular data in our answers related to internal security, left wing extremism. Now, when we talk about left wing extremism guys, okay, when we talk about the left wing extremism, okay, so basically, left wing extremist, these are the people, these are the people who believe that the present government, present state is incompetent. It has not been able to deal with the developmental issue, particularly the poor people, marginalized people, vulnerable people has been ignored and they want to remove the present state and want to establish a new system. Fine. And often then they use violence, they go against the government and they use even uh, many crude forms of uh, uh, gaining the power such as using violence. Now in India guys when we talk about the left wing extremism, so there is Naxalism, Naxalism. Okay, so Naxalism. Now, the word Naxalism comes from the place Naxalbari. So, Naxalbari was a place in West Bengal from where the revolt got started in 1960s, where people said that they are fighting for Jal, Jungal, and Jameen. Jal, Jungal, and Jameen. That is water, forest, and the land. Now, people said this thing that government has not focused on the tribal peoples, government has not focused on the vulnerable people, their lands have been encroached, given to the corporate, development is not commensurate to their requirements and because of this particular thing, there have often been the revolts. Now, basically, we see this thing that the districts which are impacted with the Naxalism, left-wing extremism, it has come down. So, the violence, according to Home Minister, violence related to left-wing extremism, it has come down by 76% in 2022 compared to 2010. And it is because of the center's three-pronged strategy. Please use this line directly in your exam. Three-pronged strategy of the government. What is this three-pronged strategy? Number one, a resolute approach to curb extremism. A resolute approach to curb extremism. Better coordination with the affected states, better co resolute, resolute approach, very strong approach, coordination with the state government and development through public participation. And the last is the development through public participation. So because of these particular, all the initiatives together, the development is coming. And even the number of the districts who are affected from the left wing extremism, they have dropped from 90 to 45, 90 to 45. Okay, so that is all guys about this particular article. Now moving to next article. What has the union budget allocated to minorities? What has the union budget allocated to minorities? Now, what this particular article guys is talking about? So basically see this thing. Now, uh, this particular article guys is discussing different different schemes that how much allocation to the minorities are going on. So what they have done? For example, for example, the scheme for Madarsas has seen 93% cut. Last year, 160 crore rupees was given. This year, 10 crore rupees have been given. So basically, it is analyzing the different different schemes and is analyzing that how much funding has been given, how much percentage funding cut has come, all these particular kind of things. 
Now guys, this article is a self-explanatory article and it contains a lot of data. Last year, last year funding for a scheme and this year funding. Last year funding, this year funding. Last year funding. So different different schemes and their funding patterns have been discussed. So the article guys doesn't contains any conceptual thing. Fine, it is just a self-explanatory kind of an article. So I'll advise you to read it at your own. Then coming to the main practice question for today. Now the question reads that increased government spending is the only assured way to make health services affordable in India. Critically analyze in the context of budget 23-24. So guys, this will be going to be a 10 marker question for GS paper number 3. 10 marker question for GS paper number 3. Please do write it and you can submit it onto the peer reviewed platform fine that we have created on telegram channel. If you are new here, you can go to our main channel that is the thinking paradise Sahil. And in that channel, we have given a pinned comment and in that pinned comment, yeah, we have given the link. You can go to that peer reviewed platform and there you can upload your answers. Okay. So guys, that is all guys about this particular uh, session. And guys, I hope that you have liked this session. And uh, guys, uh, one very important thing is that I thank you all for all the support that you are giving. But guys, I would insist that please do like the video. Please do share because I have told this thing many number of times that the this initiative only depends on your support. Okay, so guys, please do support it. Thank you so much.